States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. John. Present. Scott. Absent. Mark. Here. Stephanie. It's not there yet. Well, we're trying to get her on Zoom. Dale's present. You guys want to approve the agenda? Uh, the only thing that I missed was the um, reporting back to you guys on the Christmas holiday. What the um, employees would rather have. Okay. So if we could add that. Let's put that on the January 1st meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put that after the yeah after the, the community meeting. club. And uh, she is no longer able to um, attend today or whatever. But if you guys want to still talk about it, you can. okay, we'll do that. Who? Cool. Abby, for the community club oh, stuff. Well, Approval of the agenda. Oh, so move. Motion by Mark to approve the agenda with the addition of uh, employee holiday. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Barring none, proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, uh, same sign. Mo motion carries. Now to look over the November 18th meeting minutes. Yes, I read through them last night. I didn't see anything out of. No. Oh, yeah, there was something on it. Um, when it says uh, who is present at the meeting, we didn't have uh, KLJ representatives listed as oh. who is present. Perfect. I can't remember. It must have been written down. Yeah, Ryan yeah, was here, wasn't he? With, was the last one? Yeah, yeah. Paul and... Pork. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Was I gone too long? I lost my right, my... I can't even write anymore? No pen. Can Rob went out of my drawer. Took it away from you. Yeah, I heard the judge. That's why I'm supposed to have that lock on. Yeah. <laughs> I got the key to get into everybody. Good fight. Generator kicked in. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Motion by Mark to approve the November 18th meeting minutes as amended. And dispense with the reading. And dispense with the reading. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> All second to add Se motion. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Bar none will proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We'll look over the vouchers for this month. The 
way into Tom Gilbertson and Sons for 93000 What was that about? Oh, I grab. I see. I got it. Yes, next page. So the gravel is, is for inventory or it's been applied? Inventory. Inventory. Okay. How many yards do we get for, or how many tons? 29,000 tons, I think it was. So what is it, two? Should say it on the voucher, I think. Two dollars and 80 cents. And the road, the culverts are in a, are are a installed price. No, nope. that's just straight out. Okay. They're going to airport road, but we didn't get time this year to okay. put them in. Yeah. Better to have them on hand. And I'm not able to get them. That uh, seems to be the issue with a lot of stuff. Unless you're going to be hung and wait for a rope. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be here right away. Mm. <laughs> it doesn't matter, do you? I'll try to get my hair and I can do it. 29 colors. That right about $3. Right about. Uh, I think it's $3. $3, yeah. Close. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't right at twenty nine thousand either. So it's right about three dollars. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Tons. Now, when you buy gravel like that, do they measure the pile, or do you measure it as you they use it? Weigh it over the scale of the as area. you use it. Yeah. So there's adjustments if they were short to what you paid for or long. Good. Is it? Uh, I mean, is a is a ton about a cubic yard? Cubic yard is about three thousand pounds. Okay, so it comes out to four dollars and fifty cents a yard. About. Mm -hmm. and isn't dry gravel heavier than wet gravel or something? Yeah. That seems counterintuitive. Because the fines back tighter as well. Yeah, or it yeah. expands. You want it? Yeah. Yeah, that's just a. Fines ballpark figure they use yeah. three thousand pounds of thirty one hundred kilometers. Depends upon the type of rock. You got shale or you got granite. <coughs> Anybody see anything with the bills they have a question on? Did you see anything, Sam? Nope, I didn't. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the bills. Motion, motion by Mark to approve the bills as presented. Is there a second? <coughs> I'll second that. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Bar and none will proceed to vote. John? Aye. Mark? Aye. Dale votes aye. Motion carries. And I'll look over the monthly office reports.
Those ones? Yeah, that was So the green ones. is what's been collected, right? Yeah. I think so. That's, that's green, yeah. He had said that they uh, were going to fill, but won't fill all the way. The way I understand, the way I read this, this is the only money that's come in. These are all empty. Mm. Those are what can go into it. This is is what gives the state the money to the schools. Mm -hmm. And without that, so this isn't done to be. No. Oh. Make a motion to approve the office reports. Motion by Mark to approve the monthly office reports. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by John. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? By none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Oppose, same sign. Motion carries. Community club sign. I guess the uh, community club inquired whether they could place a, a sign on the courthouse block, and uh, I don't know that they can. <laughs> there. I, I didn't have time to check the century code for specifically, but, but public property does not allow for for that. That's why we don't, all the right of ways don't have signs on them. It has to sit outside on private property. Uh, by practice, I can almost tell you for certain that it can't, it isn't allowed because I don't see any signs in the courthouse property and it's been sitting here for 140 years. So you, you so it, because if you allow one, you have to allow all. So if they put a, if they put a sign out there in e the community club, then the Elks Club, the Eagles Club, everybody that wants that wants access to public property space has to have it. I wonder why they haven't approached the park board right next to 200 there. Same thing. A, a, a public entity I see. cannot give access to a private enterprise because that is a favoritism. Mm -hmm. So you if you give access to one you have to give access to all that's why um but you see like when they built the, the reason i would they i'd say to ask the park board is because they sold some land you know when they built the dollar general yeah. and maybe they would sell them a square and they could put it there right that's i think how it would have to be done and as you said and as we've talked about before since this is all mortgaged as one group for the new courthouse, we can't probably sell a square of it yeah. and for the purpose of the mortgage and that sort of deal. But the same thing. Yeah. So, so if, yeah. you did, if you do for one, you have to yeah. do for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. The, the practice You'd is You'd have to sell squares to anybody who wanted them. Yeah. 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 There has to be a divide between between public and private enterprise, and that Certainly. is a divide. It can't. It has to be either all or nothing. And of course, it can't be all because you wouldn't yeah. be able. Pretty soon, you wouldn't be able to flip a coin out there though it in a sign. So there's plenty of other places to put that, but yeah. public property is not one of them. Sure. I, I mean, just pick a. Yeah. Coachman, one, pick one of the spots, sure. and, and sure. there's plenty of places that, that you can yeah. work out something with. But and, and even a sign that says that just gives 
I mean, the temperature, you could have that on there, but, but say you're advertising garage sales on the side. Absolutely. You're still discriminating against somebody because you missed their garage sale. Why, why is a community club advertising this garage sale and they didn't advertise this one? It's, yeah. there's, it's a no-win situation. So uh, someone like to put forth a motion to deny their request? Yeah, I, I, I put forth the motion and hopefully we can have a resolution that, that signage is signage other than signage in behalf on behalf of the public entity isn't allowed on public grounds. Motion by John to deny community clubs request for signage on county property. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Mark. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Barring none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. Motion carries. Oh, Stephanie got yeah. in. I was going to tell you that you hopped in there. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. Uh, employee holiday or Christmas holiday. Um, so I did take a vote um, from the uh, County employees of what they would like to do if they would like half the day of the 23rd and then the full day of the 24th or if they wanted the half day of the 24th and the full day of the 27th and majority said well all of everybody said that they would rather have the half a day of the 23rd and all of the 24th. Is that what our employee handbook it says that you that's not specific enough to account for weekends. It yep, yep. If it lands on a Saturday, we observe it on. That's yours. If it um, lands on a Saturday, we observe it on Friday. If it lands on a Sunday, we observe it on Monday. This time, it's on. Um, Sunday. It's on Saturday. Saturday but the day before is Christmas Eve, so then it's just to move them. A half day. Yeah. They always get a half day off for Christmas Eve, yeah. so. If we do this seven times, we'll set policy for the manual. <laughs> <laughs> Is that an official formula? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> and how have we done? Is what she's explaining is how we've done it in the past? No, it's, it's been never, it's, it's, it's been just hit and miss. It's yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't know how we've done it in the past because it hasn't fallen. On Saturday. Um, I guess it has. We've been here and I've been here seven, ten, eight, ten years, so I guess it has, but I don't remember what we've done. Yeah. It seems like back in those years it never got to the point of arguing about trivial things like that. Yeah. <laughs> there was always other business that was taking place. <laughs> Not other stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we approved it. We just. It was just whichever one. Whichever one, one okay. they wanted to yeah. do. Yeah. So. yeah. Okay. It got more democratic after Samantha started taking votes on it and yeah, worked out well. I mean, I, I'm, that, that's... Yeah, then, then the majority of people are satisfied. Yeah, we're not, yeah, we don't have to tell, say how it's going to be and... No. They can, like I said, after seven years, it was policy. We didn't show, see what happens if it happens on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, because we've already done it. Or maybe we already have that. Should I put this in the manual now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, human services and direct costs. Um, so I just put the one page in here because the other, all those other bills were a pretty big um, files. So um, that's just basically what they're they came up with for the indirect costs for human services. How does this differ from what was presented to us initially? That, that was that 12,000. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But we wanted it itemized because we didn't use it. Mm -hmm. I got it.
Did we get it item itemized? Yes, you did in a in a bigger spreadsheet. I think I sent it out last night. Yeah, I saw it there. But I didn't I didn't see anything in my back. Um, it's on page twelve. The it's just that the uh, one email. Yeah. Okay. I didn't put all of those bills yeah. and the vouchers and stuff like okay. that in here. Okay. Yes. So, so did Samantha, did you go and, and have a look at the itemized list and make sure that the itemized things that were itemized and, and included in this ten thousand and sixteen dollars were actually corresponded to what we'd agreed to pay for as far as operating costs. Was it operating costs for the I think it was like IT stuff, um, uh, printers, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't go through it because it was all for, I think they have it on a um, uh, different, how Griggs County pays a certain percent compared to Nelson and Nelson gets, has to pay more obviously here. Be but, yeah, because but of this, the, it's all based on the value of the mail. Mm -hmm. But my point is, The state runs a program. Mm -hmm. The state doesn't fund the program to its needs, and they keep wanting to put that unfunded liability back onto the county. Do the always argue they don't have the legal authority to do that? If they don't have the legal authority to do that, why are we? Why are the citizens of Briggs County then picking up that tab? And, I mean, there's arguments for both sides of it, but it'd be nice to know what to, what we're paying for. I didn't see that I got a copy of the spreadsheet. It said she forgot to attach it. This okay, so then I sh sent, I out, sent twice, huh? Yeah, I sent another one right after mm -hmm. that. Um. And so then the question is to Jamie, what are we obligated to pay on social services? Off the top of my oh, head, it is. Um, did you find it? No. It is all. I don't even remember what's defined as. Um, I think the vehicles, um, state attorney, it, the, the accounting cost involved with with payroll and that sort of thing. Um, for my services, if 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 they use state's attorney for custody um, for for social service cases. Um, I think there's actually, I think there's actually a catch-all provision in that section of code and I, I'm just reciting from what I remember, but I think there's actually a catch-all provision that there's, the county has to levy if there's not enough money in the budget. So I think the state has taken control of it to the, but they still require the counties to pay a portion of it if they don't budget enough for it. I've never seen that provision. That provision of it. But, but I, I, we're I, supposed to be reimbursed for the infrastructure costs that we provide. Are we? Is, yeah. Does that happen? Or is, so is, does that come as an individual payment, or is it bartered out against what we owe them? Um, that comes to a payment. So I think you guys got ten. If I remember, I just talked to Mary yesterday, and I think it was ten thousand that we received, and so then we got this, and then we're paying this. So really, it's kind of a not really a wash, but you know, it's not a wash because yeah. we're still providing the infrastructure right. services. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so then it's, um, but it's the indirect cost was the telephone um, drug test for employees random pool. Um, uh, special assessments for the building, utilities, building lease, building maintenance, building improvement, um, record destruction, copier expenses, postage, um, post office box, insurance. Um, printers and scanners, shredders. Um, some 
license or computer licensing, um, insurance. That's of this ten thousand that we're paying. Yep. Yeah. No. IT and then vehicle maintenance. So a lot of those are infrastructure items. So we're being reimbursed for the infrastructure item and then being turned around and charged for infrastructure item on top of that. And I tried to get the, because it's the uh, cost, um, cost allocation uh, study or whatever, and I don't know how to read that. And I've asked them to help me. I've asked them to come in and explain it to you guys. And once I start asking those questions, they don't say anything back. So I've been sending it to Mary saying, well, hopefully you can understand what this means. But that's... Well, given the fact that we're responsible for distributing county funds, we should probably understand mm -hmm. what we're distributing the money for. Mm -hmm. There's a surefire way to get them to come and talk to us. Don't pay them. Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> no, come and talk to us. Yeah. No, I don't pay them. Okay. <laughs> and it's it's prob it's probably all the way it's supposed to be, but until we're sure of that, we need to be skeptical. Because when the county gave up the social services, we also gave up a, a big share of money that we were getting from the state to run those social services. So we were getting 12% basically from the state of our to run the social services when it was only cost us 8% when they took it away the 12% it cost us 4% in the general fund by switching this over to let the state run it. That was the purpose of the state doing that of course but the counties are the ones that suffered the shortfall, not the state. The state didn't take it over because they wanted to run it. They took it over because they were in a budget shortfall and they were trying to gather up money. It was a bait and switch that they sold as <clears throat> this is where the this is where the property tax reform is going to be by us taking social services. <laughs> I'm paranoid that Charles listening to me, so I didn't use that, that terminology, but you're correct. So <laughs> human services are already upset with me, so I'm <laughs> No, but that's what happened. So if that's the case, is it, that's how they sold it to us, they should, they should have to at least follow through and be able to explain why we're paying them now when we weren't yeah. first supposed to. And secondly, it cost us quite a bit of money, not us, the cost of citizens yeah. of Grace County, quite a bit of money to switch this over. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm saying the citizens deserve an explanation, an explanation. of why we're paying the money. And that way we'll get to meet the new director. Yes, sir, come to the next meeting. Please. Okay. I don't think you'll get to see the new director for quite some time when we did songs back in a Mary. Oh. It's that other lady that's taking over Mary's position, though, in the meantime. Oh, okay. That one. I'm not really sure what. can't remember her name. Rhonda, maybe? <clears throat> Jill. Social Services has quite some time filling the positions. Grand Forks County, I think it's Burley County. Uh, Cass County, and there's quite a few other ones that the directors have left after this new state yeah. thing has happened. So they're looking to fill the big counties first. It's Jill from the North Northern Valley Human Services Zone. I'm not sure who that. Or who maybe that. the NDSU County Agent Department can help them out in filling this position. They seem to be quite a that. <laughs> Or maybe they got them all full now. I don't know. Well, if you'd ask them to come and explain it to us. Our next meeting and go 
go over it with us. That would be good. Okay. Basically focusing on what we are obligated to pay to social services and then what they're obligated to pay to reimburse us for. Okay. Mika? application for a tax abatement but I don't know if you can get a farm abatement if you don't own the parcel that the house is on the entire parcel I think if you just have a little lot I don't think they it works that way so I remember when Mike Peterson tried to get farm exemption where he lives out on 200 there mm -hmm. he doesn't own the property that the house is attached. He owns the lot that the house yeah. is on, but not the rest of it. It was denied. So, so uh -huh. the tax abatement goes to the, okay, so it has, it has to be, the lot has to be 10 acres or more or attached to the, to a piece of property that is used for agriculture of 10 acres or more. But I think you have to own the. You can't own a five acre lot in a quarter section that I own the remainder of and get a farm exemption. No. From my rough understanding, but I'm not for sure on it. 10, a ten acres is yeah. minimum. Is that what it says, Jamie? I am just looking for eight and home. But then you have to meet the other requirements. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't mean, you know, the other requirements don't mean that you have to own any more than 10 acres. Uh, somebody working for a farmer can get the farm exemption if the percentage of his income comes is directly related to farming. So if, say, you had a hired man that owned 10 acres and, and his sole income came from working for you, yeah. he would be entitled to that farm exemption for that house. But you have to have over 10 acres. Is that what it's saying? The, the lot either has to be over 10 acres or it has to be <coughs> adjacent to something that you farm okay over 10 acres this is the way i read that but what we've done in the past of course is we relied on the township to give us the guidance no okay. So in that case, I would suggest that we find that part of the century code and send it back to that township. I, I think he qualifies because he does farm all the land around that piece of property. Yeah, but he doesn't own it, if, if, if that's my understanding. The income part of it and all that he applies, but if it says you got to own 10 acres of land or adjacent to it. It's, it's either or. It's 10 acres or, and I don't think, I don't know if it says own. <laughs> right. Just give me a few, a little bit here. Yeah. You under the residential or under the residential exemption is where it's at. Yeah. yeah. Well, 
Well, let's move on and table this until he finds us our stuff. We got a schedule for our 2022 meetings. I kept you guys on Thursdays again, if you would like to do that. Um, and then uh, 2.30, except on the October 6th, that'll be your budget hearing. So we'll do your meeting at 4.30. Um, two meetings a month still. Mm -hmm. That's what you'd like. Work. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting schedule for 2022. Got a motion by Mark to approve the 2022 commission meeting schedule. Is there a second? I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Or none will proceed to vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Pro. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. your land with that uh, electronic? No. I got permanent signs on everything. So You should be able to bring up then a finger over that way and it'll tell you who owns the land. I'm not so sure. I'm not sure ownership is a prerequisite. Mm -hmm. Jamie? Well, farm means a single tractor and this is a definition of farm before this, this section of code means a single tract or contiguous tracts of agricultural land contain a minimum of 10 acres and for which the farmer actually farming the land or engaged in the raising of livestock or other similar op operations normally associated with farming and ranching has annual gross income from farming activities which is 66% or more of the annual gross income including gross income of the smallest is married during any of the two preceding calendar years. Yeah, so ownership isn't a prerequisite. No. <coughs> okay. That's what I thought. But you have to operate it. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's a ten acre farmyard inside the quarter, and I don't want to rest the land as long as it's ten acres and farms, it should be good. And you meet, but the course says the chances of that are, are little to none because you could never meet the financial. You would, unless you're, you know, where would you be getting any money to survive if sixty six percent of it has to come from that ten acres? It's only a couple crops you can grow to do that. No, it's not from that 10 acres. It's from far, the farming activity. I think there's probably only one, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that would be to do that. I'll make a motion to approve the abatement. Motion by Mark to approve the abatement. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by John. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Barring none, we'll see to vote. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same aye. sign. <laughs> Motion carries. You got something on 
opioid litigation, James? Yeah, just quickly. Um, See, there are two poppies. What's that? There are two poppies. Oh, that's true, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if we quite have the right, the right climate for that, but... Um, yeah, the it appears that one of the, the opioid manufacturers, I don't remember which one it is, in my head is actually settling with all the states. Um, so Attorney General's office contacted me. Um, I have opted into the settlement to get more information so we don't lose our opportunity to opt in. Um, <laughs> we're going to get more information from the state as far as opting into the settlement, and it will be sometime probably January, but I had to do it for the time being. Um, to get into, to be able to allow it to be into this in, into the settlement. So I just that's all it is. Is that we'll be getting more information, but I opted in as of right now. We'll find out what's going to happen on the road, and we can opt, determine if we want to opt into that settlement or not. So there'll be more information coming, but I want to let you guys know where we're at with it. Um, and I don't know what's happening with other companies. There are other companies that are being sued, so I'm sure there's more stuff that would be coming on the pike with that. So it's following the same framework as, uh, as a tobacco lawsuit? It's kind of appearing that it will be. So there's a little bit of a unique situation with this. Um, there was there were a bunch of big law firms that uh, kind of initiated this opioid la opioid lawsuits. Um, and the attorney, attorney general's office actually recommended that we don't opt in on those, we don't retain firms. Some of the larger places did retain firms. Um, so it, it's kind of, it's gonna be messy because those firms are gonna want their money. Um, I don't think they presented here, but um, there was a, a firm that presented in Nelson County and they had like iPad kind of presentations that they handed out to everybody and it was, it's big money involved, so it was a big deal. Um, they actually had a, a former legislator that came and he flew in all these little places in Fargo, Bismarck and whatever. They had, there were a couple a couple firms fighting all around North Dakota for everybody. Um, it kind of sounds like maybe the Firms are probably going to be on the losing end of it because it sounds like there's a couple of judges that are favoring giving the settlement to the state or to the states, and um, so there'll be a battle that'll ensue at some point. But um, there's going to be some settlements, so maybe we'll see some money. But I have a feeling the state will get all the money and they'll get to direct where that money goes. Well, I mean, if it follows the press, if it follows the course of the tobacco. The law firms got a huge chunk of it, but then when the funds finally filtered down to the individual municipalities, they had to be used for the purpose of prevention, and there was no way to use them. So it, it just created some it created some silly agents, some silly businesses that distributed plant pamphlets telling you not to smoke, right. and, and uh, so the money didn't the money didn't help anybody other than the. The people that initiated the suit, a lot the law firms. The best thing that they could do, <clears throat> it, it could all go. With, and I guess, in my opinion, dealing with this crap would be that it go into a pool for the state to use for mental health and chemical dependency treatment because there's not enough facilities for that. So if the state could get that money to do that, that'd be awesome. But knowing the state, they'll probably not do that. Well, judging from the handout we got last week when I wasn't here and. Uh, Curry dog funds are so far behind, and they're not. I mean, the only one that we've been starting to feel is the general fund. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I guess I'm in favor of keeping informed, but as far as us, Griggs County, putting much time or hopefully not any funds into it, I don't think that. No, I don't think there's any. Be, I don't um, think that there's any return on any funds. I, yeah. I think. At some point, we'll probably be signing a settlement agreement to get some money put in, likely to the state coffers, and they'll figure out who gets it. Right. But I think as long as we can get, if if there's an agreement that we can get some money brought back to the state, I think that's the best thing that could happen. Maybe they could pay us in gravel. It work. <laughs>
something useful. So, I guess I, I've got some more for you guys on the new Cordova's, old Cordova's. I know there was, um, the last meeting there was some questions of, of where we're at. Um, I went back and looked at some old emails, actually, and found some more information. Um, it looks like, other than the dem demolisher, what we did with the architects, it looks like there needs to be some more stuff done and we can start working on it from my, my office. Um, it looks like there's um, <coughs> some updates that need to be done, which for the registry of historic places, um, states that should be nominated to indicate that the structure has been or is being demolished in an approximate date. Um, and once it's once it's demolished, it will have to remove it from the National Registry. Um, that can be done after the fact. Um, I think it looks like maybe the biggest issue that they'll have is architectural salvage work. It looks like that we have to do, it states that we have to work with a contract to determine if any of the defining architectural features as defined by NDSU um, can be safely removed and reused in some other capacity or donated to a local museum or sold for reuse. So I don't know if, if we want to have a contractor come and look at that because that's that's going to be almost cost prohibitive. <laughs> As I've stated so many times, until we get a definite list of what needs to be done, we're just going down the road and right. like a dog chasing a ball. And we catch the ball and, and they throw another one. We catch the ball and they throw another one. It's we can't keep spending what did we spent last time twelve thousand dollars time and time again with the hopes that this will finally give us a permission to go ahead and demolish this thing. And the State Historical Society holds all the cards here. In order to keep from having to pay back the million dollar grant on the courthouse building here, this the National Historical Society has given the state the power to either approve or disapprove. And until they sign off on that form, we're dead in the water and until they decide what exactly we have to do in order to satisfy the state historical society, we're just chasing our tail here. Well, I'll send another email out to them again and if these really what they're writing here, so I'll send an email. Out. I mean, we need a check. We need a checklist of what needs to be done, and when we get to the bottom of that checklist, it's done. Yes, and as we did that once already, but you see, yeah, you see how they react. Yeah. There's what. Well, so this email that I have is actually it's an old email. It's from 2019. Yeah, you know, yeah. So all um, now that we've got the architectural study done, I'll find out. But that's the hurdles that we need to, we need to get the blessing of the State Historical Society. Yes. With that, that that takes precedent over <clears throat> the National Register. Yep. They, they gave the authority for that, and, and I think we have an email somewhere stating that the grant, if if the state signs off on it, the grant wouldn't, they wouldn't come after the Great. grant. Okay. I'll get a hold of Lisa later, <clears throat> see what we can do on that email back by next. You know, we also have an in-house email between the director of the State Historical Society and one of her people in office that I don't want, know why we ended up with it, Bob ended up with it, stating that this Greeks County Courthouse will never be torn out. <laughs> and then it's, we have to get it, it's pledged as collateral. There's a, yeah, so, so then we need to remove it. We need the we need the Bank of North Dakota as trustee Need to remove it That's to remove it. Then <coughs> the lending agency, no, the lending agency first will have to sign off on mm -hmm. that. We'll have to survey the property. We have to get the Bank of North Dakota to rewrite the lease agreement. But 
as we've talked before, and I think if I understood that right, um, you know, we're going to want to have somebody come in and salvage as much as they can out of it. A, a, a company that'll come in and use and reuse and oh, yeah, we'll possibly that. take sure all those we'll things down. on the East Coast or something. But, yeah. um, but we can't hardly do that until we can. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a much better chance of a pinpoint tornado coming down and picking it up and taking it out here than us ever tearing that thing down. I, I tend to agree with that. Well, we had a couple tornado warnings this summer. Getting closer. <laughs> Getting closer. <laughs> you have any future business? Um, on the old courthouse, new courthouse, um, we are having some issues with our generator at the moment. Um, Brian has been looking into it, and the starter, correct? He has to get a new starter for it. Mm -hmm. um, so right now it is not operational. So have, <coughs> rather than Brian doing the work, have Abrahams? We contacted <clears throat> them. They don't maintenance anything. They just sell them. So we yeah. did get the uh, manual from them. So then Brian has been looking into that. I think we, so get, get a name and number of who Abrahams used to do the maintenance. Okay. Yeah. There's a place in Jane, Grand Forks. Grand Forks. I know what he said. Mm -hmm. It comes. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. Go that route. I I think we I think we almost have to. We we need to have someone that yeah. Not that Brian doesn't know what he's doing, but we need to have somebody that's trained, certified, and yeah. insured to do this because you can screw a lot of things up. Yeah. And if we don't have backup power in time of uh, an emergency, and then what do we say? Sure. Well, we didn't. We yeah. didn't handle this and get it fixed. We tried to save $200 on yeah. changing yeah. something out. <laughs> so get get from Omar who we should have and get them up here and have them, have them give us a quote on what's wrong and what needs to be done. Okay. And then, yeah. Tell that to Brian so he can make that happen. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> It's different fixing the lock on the door, but something like this where the implications could be severe. Future business? I don't have anything on future business. Anybody else have any future? Can we make a motion that Christmas has to fall on during the week? And, uh, I tried to cancel last time <laughs> due to supply yeah. chain constraints, but I was unsuccessful. Well, that up with a higher power. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a motion to adjourn. A motion by Mark to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. Uh, second second. by John. <laughs> Any discussion? Any discussion? Any further discussion? Barry none will cede the vote. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same aye. sign. Motion carries. Meeting adjourned at 325. Next meeting is December 16th at 2.30 in this room.